Welcome to Spirit Fuel Television. I'm your host, Dr. Candace Smitheman, and we want to thank you so much for joining us today. The whole vision and mission of Spirit Fuel is to unite one million believers in the prophetic voice. We want to encourage you and uplift you. We want to help the body of Christ come to know the Lord Jesus from the prophetic voice. And so, we invite you to share this broadcast with all of your friends today. And please go to spiritfuel.me because it's there that you'll have the opportunity to subscribe to our email list. We would love to provide you with more encouragement. And that is a great way for you to be built up and encouraged daily. Today's guest is the founding pastor of Abundant Grace Christian Church. Also, Jesus Reigns International, and he's the apostolic leader with Christ's Covenant Coalition. He received a miracle healing from cancer, and he wrote a book that unlocks the keys to the miraculous. His book is called Unleashing Heaven's Breath, Discovering the Ultimate Secret to Releasing Signs, Wonders, and Miracles. Let's welcome onto our broadcast today, Pastor Steve Hannett. Hello, Pastor Steve. Hey, God bless Dr. Candice. Thank you so much for having me today. I'm, I'm excited for what God's going to do in the broadcast today. It's going to be truly amazing. I know you and I had the chance to talk offline. Um, we want to make sure we encourage people to frame the miracle in their life. And that's what today's broadcast is all about, is framing your miracle. And so I wanted to start off the interview today by giving you an opportunity to share just a little bit about the miraculous healing that you received from cancer because that was kind of that jump start point for you to receive direct revelation from heaven that is going to help the rest of us tap into the miraculous life. So share with us just a little bit about that miraculous healing. Yeah. Amen. So yeah, I was about 19 years old and um, like everybody would occasionally get a swollen gland or something like that in their body. And uh, one time I was uh, shaving and felt the bottom of my neck and I felt a lump right around here. And I didn't have any pain or anything, but went to the doctors and they began to check me and then they began to get concerned. And uh, long story short, they diagnosed me with cancer. And when I received that diagnosis, like any 19 year old, I mean, it turned my life upside down. I was filled with fear, filled with horrible thoughts of, of dying of cancer and going through all the terrible treatment. And it really caused me to cry um, out to God. Now, I grew up in a Christian tradition where you went to church every, every Sunday, you followed a lot of rules, but I never really encountered God. Mm -hmm. So I, I heard more about Jesus than I actually ever met Jesus. Mm -hmm. But in this pain, I couldn't rely on some rote prayers or repetitious prayers. I needed to cry out to God out there. So I went on the beach and... Uh, by myself, and I was looking at one of those God skies, the kind that the sunlight's coming through the clouds and hitting the water. And as I was there alone, I simply asked God to teach me. Mm. And like David says in the Psalms, God heard his cry. Well, God heard my cry. Mm. And it was from that point that God divinely led me to understand uh, who Jesus is, what he did on the cross for me, who the devil is, how he's trying to kill, steal, and destroy, and how to overcome this attack on my life. Wow. And the same day that I received Jesus Christ, immediately after I received Jesus Christ, his healing power flooded my body and removed every ounce of cancer. And that was the beginning. Dr. Candice, I'm, I'm so thankful to Jesus because I met him with power. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Well, what would you say to people right now? Because there's some that are going to be watching that, that may have cancer or may have a chronic illness. What would you speak to their hearts right now as they hear your story and they're thinking, Lord, will you do this for me? God, so, so shh. Just, just bring an encouraging word to those people right now because I know yeah. that they're going, will God do this for me too? Yeah, I, absolutely. You know, everybody who's listening to you right now, I, I want you to be encouraged that the Bible clearly teaches in multiple places that God shows no partiality among men. 
Uh, to say that another way, what he did for me, he'll do for everyone. Mm -hmm. Because he doesn't love me more than anyone else. Mm -hmm. And so the critical nature is not so much, God, will you do this for me? But rather, Lord, what have you done for me? Mm -hmm. And what have you provided for me? Mm -hmm. And how do I activate what your love has already promised me? So... It's very similar to uh, a family being around a table and, and mom and dad making an amazing meal and everybody's there and the, the, the food is provided. But one child says, I don't believe in this food or I don't want this food or they're thinking that the food isn't for them, it's for somebody else. And they go hungry. Well, in the reality, that food is for them. Dr. Candice, the word of God in every promise and every drop of blood for Jesus, that flowed from Jesus Christ is for every single believer. They're Amen. sitting at a table in the presence of their enemies. Their cup is overflowing. Goodness and mercy is actually following them. They Amen. just need to know how to access the grace and the love and the miracle power of God. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. Now, in your book, you share some of these keys specifically. So it's not that people just listen to this broadcast and then we're done, but they can follow up and get your book um, by going to everyhousenow.org and pick it up there. But you have in it that people, I know part of the testimonies that people have had when they've read it is that they were able to look at the word of God differently when it came to their situation. So share with us a little bit about that so that people can kind of understand if they grab a hold of your book, what is it that they're going to receive in understanding the word of God? What, what light bulb is going to go off that's really going to help them to connect with the miraculous? Well, this is the most exciting thing because so many people are saying, okay, pastor, well, if I need to know how to access it, how do I do that? How do I get it? Well, the book unveils the single key uh, and, and, and though there are many wonderful things to study about how to stand in prayer and everything, we've got to simplify things in life and go to the direct source of mm -hmm. power, to the direct source. So Unleashing Heaven's Breath is a book that helps to unfold or unpack mm -hmm. or almost unveil the source of the Word of God. See, God gave His Word. He gave his word in Psalm 107, verse 20 says that God sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. All throughout the entire Bible, God is revealing that his word is the very source of his power. It's the very releasing of his power. Mm -hmm. In fact, throughout scriptures, and we detail these scriptures in the book, we see that there is no difference between God himself and his word. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you were to want to get to know God, you would get to know his word. If you get to know his word, you're going to get to know God. But there's a major difficulty because we usually come to his word and we see a, a, a book with golden gilded edges and and leather or uh, vinyl or, or paper and ink. And, and we, we already have a mindset about this word. And so we're, we're thinking, well, that's the Bible. Many think it's a boring book, difficult to understand. But you see, the day that I sat in front of a divinely appointed man to share the gospel with me and to share the healing power of God with me, he slid this book across the desk. And I asked him, what does this have to do with me being healed? What does it have to do with it? I thought this is a religious book. Medical science is a different thing. And, you know, we just kind of pray and hope for the best. But when I asked him, I said, what does this have to do with me being sick and mm -hmm. getting healed? And I'll never forget it in my whole life. He leaned across the desk. He looked right into my eyes and he said everything. Dr. Candice, everybody listening to my voice needs to know that those who are holding the word of God have been given a portal, an actual portal into the spiritual realms of God. And that spiritual realm of God 
is a glory realm of God. Mm -hmm. And in that glory realm of God, cancer cannot be victorious. Uh, sickness and disease have been defeated. Mm -hmm. And so the word of God is not something that is passive knowledge. And this is the big shift that's going to happen to people when they read the book, or at least what people have reported after sitting under the teaching. They hear things like, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And, and they begin to shift and have a paradigmatic shift. They, they get out of the box in which they were thinking that now they shift from the Word of God being something such as information mm. or a book, and they make the shift to the word of God being a someone, the That's revelation of someone. That so, is so good. Yeah, yeah, so it's very, very exciting. And that shift will begin to unpack a lifestyle and a mindset and be able to help people to access the power of God. You know, I love how you you – you share from, you know, John chapter one, you know, where, where, you know, he was the word and the word did walk and the word lived and the word breathed. And I, I can remember early on in my Christian walk, I used to ask, uh, I would just find that the Holy Spirit would ask through me, you know, well, what's the will of the father, right? Just to try and cause me to, to be quickened in my mind. And, and God would begin to say to me, my will is my word, you know, because sometimes people feel that God's will is some kind of arbitrary thing. Like, you know, will he heal me? Will he not heal me? You know, they throw all these questions in there, but they negate the fact that God's word is God's will. And so when we can come to that place of understanding that God's word is a person and it was him who walked the earth and he had a will and the will comes forth in an action that emanates all of who God is. And then we can begin to tap into that. Things are going to change for us. We're going to begin to frame our world based on the fact that the word is walking and we are in relationship with the word. And when we connect with the word, we can then frame our world because the word himself is speaking in and through us. That's right. You know, if, if you hear Psalm, uh, Psalm 33, verse six, I'm going to read this. It says, by the word of the Lord, the heavens were made and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. If we think even in Hebrews chapter 11, so the, that by faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Now, the Greek word for framed is uh, katarizo. And mm -hmm. that word literally translated doesn't actually mean created as much as it means made whole made perfect, put together. So if God's word put the universe together, if God's word framed the entire universe because the earth was with void and, and God spoke and it, he, he fashioned everything in perfection. And if God's word can do that for the universe that we're living in, what will it do to my body? What will it do to the sickness or disease? And this is what's so amazing. God in Genesis chapter one says, let there be light. In the Hebrew, it means let light become. And, you know, this is so powerful because a lot of people think he's speaking about natural light. But actually, he had not yet made the sun, the moon or mm -hmm. the stars. And so what God was doing in the cosmos at that time According to 1 John chapter 1, it says that God is light and in him there is no darkness. And so what God is doing is saying, let there be light. Wow, what he's doing in the, the Lord really impressed this upon my heart to understand this. He's saying, let me, let me be released. I'm light. Let there be light. It means mm. let there be me in the place of darkness. Mm. When we speak the word of God, when yes. we study the word of God, when we pray the word of God, when we declare the word of God, when we command yes. a tumor to shrivel up and die in the name of Jesus, and we pray that word, we're literally, not figuratively, mm. literally releasing God into that body, releasing God into that problem. And we know in Genesis mm. what happened to the darkness. The light divided, the word of God divided mm. the light from the dark 
and the darkness could not overcome it. And that's why we have a treasure that needs to be unpacked, needs to be unveiled concerning what the word of God really is and how to put it in our mouth and our heart to see it create what only it can create. Okay, I'm going to um, I'm going to pause here just for a second. And and I want to remind people that they can go on to spiritfuel.me. We want you to subscribe to our email list because it's there that you're going to get more encouraging words just like you're hearing right now. And it's there that we're going to have the opportunity to continue to speak prophetically into your life. So go online and subscribe to spiritfuel.me. It's also our online magazine too and you're going to get not only words that are going to come into your email box, but there's a whole lot of prophetic voices that are right there on that website that will encourage you in any moment because there's words that are coming through from God every day. And so we want to invite you to go online there. Now, I'm going to stop for a second because I want to put Pastor Steve on the spot here. Pastor Steve, I know you're a teacher of the word of God. Okay, so as students um, and as the students that are going to be watching, Teach us specifically, if we were in a case scenario where we needed to be able to frame our miracle, what would that look like and what would we do exactly? So walk us through that process so that we can copy you as an example. Just like Paul says, I'm an example, do what I do. So we want to sit at your feet, share with us, what do we do if we want to begin to start to frame miracles in our life and unleash heaven's breath? Okay, amen. Amen. Um, this is my heart to share this answer because this is what we need. Um, I'm going to share very briefly um, five forms of the Word of God uh, to help even frame what's happening here. In the beginning was the Word. Well, that was the pre-existent Word of God. It was around before anything. But then God spoke the Word like we discussed. So now the Word of God is in a spoken form. But then it moved to a written form. Mm. And then Jesus comes to the earth incarnate. And now the Bible says the word became flesh. And now that's an incarnate form. And then finally, that word is working and laying hands on people. And the word of God is manifested. Mm -hmm. So what we're speaking about answering the question is, how do you move from this almighty power of God? And how does it become manifested? Yes. Here's the answer. One, we must receive the God who's speaking. Mm. You cannot have confidence in the word if you don't know the one who's speaking it. Mm. So there's mm -hmm. a growth, <laughs> excuse me, in the revelatory knowledge of God. So we need to study his word. We need to mm. understand his word. We need to grow and soak and meditate. What is the word of God saying? We must, in essence, there's a Hebrew word when there's intimate knowledge and it's yada. And it means to become one with. We must soak in the word, not where we know it mentally, but where we become one with that word. Number two, we must then understand that we are temples of him, of his glory, of his spirit. And we can now take that which we've received and release it. And this mm. is moving the word of God from being potential power into kinetic power. And so to give a rather crude example of this, but it's accurate, is to think about an arrow in a bow. The arrow needs to go in the bow and the bow needs to be pulled back and then the arrow needs to be released. If mm -hmm. the bow is not pulled back, if the arrow is not released, you have potential power, but it does nothing. Mm -hmm. Well, when God says in John chapter 15, if you abide in me, and my words abide in you, then you will ask and you will receive. There is a activation, a releasing of that word within us, <coughs> what we've received 
through prayer. Now, a lot of people say, oh, somebody else is going to tell me to pray. I've been praying. I've been doing that. Well, <laughs> maybe, but in my humble experience, most people pray out of their soul, out of their mind, mm -hmm. out of their emotions, out of their reason. But if you look in the book of Nehemiah, Nehemiah prayed the word of God. Mm -hmm. the, the, the apostolic prayers were prayers that literally were not their words, but a releasing of God's word. Now, I'm going to give you a, a description, if I may, uh, of the reality of this. So we were in Chicago recently, our ministry, uh, every house was in Chicago praying for and doing a revival um, there with a few teams where all the shootings are taking place. And a woman came up and her, her, she had one foot about three to three and a half inches shorter than the other one. Mm. In fact, her whole spine and body looked like a Z. Now, this woman believed God. She loved God, but we began to minister right there at, at the front of the, the altar. We began to minister to her. Hey, God wants to fix that. Hey, mm -hmm. God's word will frame this miracle. He says that if I speak the word, I can speak to a mountain. I can tell the mountain to be removed. How to speak it? Well, my goodness, isn't that what God did in Genesis? He's telling mm -hmm. us, his sons and daughters, to speak, not our fear. Not our thoughts, not our philosophy, not man-made religion, purely undefiled word of God. Well, we began to pray for this woman, and we began to command the word of God. I mean, I'm sorry, we began to use the word, commanding from the word, that leg to grow. And mm -hmm. as we were doing that, nothing happened. Nothing. Nothing happened. But you see, when you get persuaded, God's word framed the universe. It mm. must work. God cannot lie. We tarried a little bit. We began to continue to pray. And all of a sudden, everybody starts going crazy as they're watching this limb begin to grow out. Mm. Now, we see this, not routinely, but we've seen this happen a number of times. And even uh, people who have not been able to hear, we speak ears, be open, just like Jesus. Now, we don't have any power. We don't have any ability to perform these things, but my goodness, God's grace puts his word in mm -hmm. our mouth. And when it's mixed with faith in that word, it releases the power of God. And so whatever mm -hmm. miracle somebody needs, they need to know what God is saying about that content or about that problem or about that dream. And they need to pray the word of God with faith. And at that time, they will see the grace, the power of God. And this is what happened when I was healed of cancer, Dr. Candace. Mm -hmm. the, it, that cancer was commanded to depart from my body in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. This is what Jesus did. He commanded sickness out. This is what the early apostles did. This is what those who believe should also do. And anybody, anybody who's hearing my voice right now, just cast all doubt out. Humble mm -hmm. yourself under the hand of God. Get into his word in such a way that you're going to receive it. And it's going to bubble up out of you. And it'll start to change your language. And you're going to begin to make declaration. You're going to begin to speak to mountains. And you're going to watch them move. You know, I'm really excited about what you're sharing because I think a lot of people, when they think about miracles and healings, they think there needs to be some kind of manifestation that comes from the person that's praying. Like maybe if they pray really loud that something is going to change or maybe if they start screaming and hollering or practically choking that demon that something's going to change. But you have brought this to the practical standpoint. And we know Jesus is our example also. Just speak to the situation and then watch God make the change. And so I think for the ordinary person who's not sure whether or not they have the power to walk in the gifts of God to bring healing or the miraculous from heaven, knowing that they have a tool with the word of God and simply their voice. They don't have to have massive gyrations. All kinds of craziness doesn't have to take place. They have just got to release the word of God in the moment, 
stand in faith that the word himself, which is God himself, is going to show up on the scene and is going to bind that sickness and is going to release heaven in that moment and, and that they can actually do this themselves. And so I'm just truly encouraged by what you're sharing because this is going to enable just a practical Christian to practically step into that place of being able to walk in healing and walk in miracles. And I think that that's so important because God has said that we can do that. But a lot of times people think, well, you know, I, I don't have the gift of healings or, you know, I don't have the gift of miracles. And so this is not going to happen. Yes, it can happen because when you're there, the word is there. That's right. You know, when, when today, especially my, my heart is to share that people are being distracted to mm -hmm. seek everything else except the foundation of what God is revealing in his gospel. I heard a pastor say recently, Jesus plus something equals nothing. Mm -hmm. And Jesus plus nothing equals everything. Wow. We need to get back to the power of Calvary, the power of two pieces of wood nailed together with a savior there. It's there that we need to go back to. We need to get back to the basics of the foundation and understand that that cross was unraveling every element of the curse. Our faith must not be in feeling. Too many are saying, I need a prophetic word. I, I, I need a vision. I, I, I need to smell something supernatural. My goodness, the most dangerous, skilled, mature believer, dangerous to the enemy, and, and mature believer is on their knees, needs nothing. They don't need to see anything. They don't need to hear anything. They don't need to feel anything. They simply believe the word of God. And you see Jesus Christ, when he commanded the, the uh, fig tree uh, to wither and to die, the amazing thing was nothing happened physically. There was no manifestation. But the next day, they mm -hmm. saw it. And the word came. I want to encourage every one of you. When you believe and receive and speak the word of God, when you begin to declare and you begin to really move in that understanding, mm -hmm. let your faith be in the simplicity of the nail-scarred hands of Jesus. God cannot lie. Mm -hmm. Whenever his word gets sent, it will not return void. It will not return back to him void. You must Release the word of God and hold the word of God. Hope seen is not hope at all, but mm. faith is the substance of things we hope for in Greek expected. Hold it. Dear brother and sister, if it didn't manifest in day one, day two, hold it. Continue speaking. Hold it. Faith and patience inherit the promise of God. You don't need to see anything. You don't need to hear anything. Simply, Father, because thou hast said it, I receive it. It is settled. Mm -hmm. All the Psalms say that God's word is settled in heaven. It shall come to pass. Believe mm -hmm. with no doubting and you will see the mountain move. You do not need to be an apostle, a prophet, an evangelist, mm -hmm. a pastor, or a teacher. You are the one to whom the power of God has been directed. It is for you. It is for you. It is for you. It is not for someone else only. If the word of God was sent to you, my goodness, grab it, receive it, drink it, and declare it, and be immovable. Mm -hmm. Faith means I won't look left. I won't look right. I believe. It doesn't matter even if symptoms continue to tarry. You may declare the word of God is working mightily within me. And you must, hallelujah, understand that when God's word is released, that he himself is released. Has God ever failed? Has God ever failed? No. Has God ever failed? My goodness, his battle record is undefeated. He can't fail. He Even when we're faithless. He's faithful because he can't deny himself. Put your faith in the faithfulness of almighty God. Oh, brothers and sisters, you cannot look to people to find the model and the example. We can give testimonies testifying of the miracle power of God, but you must peer into the eyes of 
fire of the one who died for you. You must see him. You must receive that gift. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, my goodness. I'm so encouraged about today's message because it's for everyone. Everyone, no matter where you consider yourself to be, um, you know, if you think you're a spiritual giant or if you sometimes feel like that grasshopper there, either way, it is the word of God that change, changes and transforms things. Yes. And I, what I love about what you're sharing, too, is that is that when we become transformed by the word of God and then we are equipped with this faith that enables us to go out and speak the word because when you're changed by it yourself when transformation has taken place in and through you then you carry a new and fresh anointing for distributing the word of god in the environments that god is calling you to do that in and, and i know that as a man of faith you walk in actually having seen these amazing things happen at the spoken word of God. And so those people that are watching today, be encouraged by Pastor Steve, because when he saw he had a need, he went and he spoke the word and then he was changed and transformed. He was changed and transformed in his heart. And he spoke the word in addition to that. And then, and then he sees these great miracles that are happening. And the same thing can happen with you, but, but you need to rest in that word, study that word, be changed and transformed by that word. That will increase your faith to be able to speak out and believe that God will indeed transform the world around you because his word is constantly transforming it is but but sometimes we need to step into that place of knowing that that we've been transformed ourselves and so therefore there's extra power in that there's extra anointing on that so i just want to encourage those that are watching today step out and put god um put his word uh, in the places that it needs to be if he's telling you to assign the word in a certain spot then have the faith to assign the word there because that's going to be the place that he is calling for change. He just needs a willing subject who is going to put the word of God in that place and speak life to it there. Well, Pastor Steve, we are closing down right now. Can you believe it? It's already been 30 minutes, so it's been wonderful. But I want you to pray for the people that um, are watching today. I want you to pray for them to just receive um, that an impartation of understanding God's word um, where they become one with his word and that they have that faith to, to step out, leap out and begin to frame their world with his word. So if you wouldn't mind praying for us today. It'd be my honor. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus Christ that Father, your word is life. It is the word of your power. And Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for what Paul prayed for the spirit of wisdom and a revelation. God, that you would open the eyes, Lord, the eyes of their understanding of your word. Father, I pray, God, that they would no longer even just read your word, but God, that they would commune with your God, with your word, God. And oh God, that they would commune with it and become one with it. And Lord, that you will send your word from their mouths into creation for your glory. Father, if there be anybody sick, if anybody be hurting, if they need a breakthrough, oh God, if they need uh, a touch at this moment, Lord God, in, in, in that place that, Father, they felt like it was all lost, I declare in the name of Jesus it is not lost. And I pray for a healing touch right now and command and speak that by Jesus Christ's stripes, we are healed. You are healed. So be healed and may your body return back to normal as the word of god declares that by your stripes we were healed i speak it for healed be healed in the name of jesus christ amen 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 praise the lord praise the lord well if you want to um get a copy of pastor steve's book unleashing heaven's breath discovering the ultimate secret to releasing signs, wonders, and miracles. You can find that at everyhousenow.org. Uh, so we want to just encourage you all uh, to go there and get yourself a copy of this because he's unlocking the keys to the miraculous for you and just giving you that encouragement to step out and to speak the word of God. 
Uh, if you'd like more information about my ministry, I'd like to invite you to go to CandaceSmithman.com. There you'll also find a lot of different resources and encouragements uh, for you as well. And as always here at Spirit Fuel, we invite you to subscribe to our email list at spiritfuel.me because it's there that we'll have the opportunity to continue to bring you these amazing prophetic voices. You can also go to spiritfuel.tv and you can watch all the archived messages, um, all the archived prophetic voices that are out there speaking on a variety of different subjects at spiritfuel.tv. We wanna thank you for joining us today uh, on this broadcast. Remember to feed the flame on the inside of you. That's what Spirit Fuel is all about. It's about feeding the flame of the flame on the inside of you with the word of God so that you can walk in the power and presence of the Holy Spirit. We invite you to join us again next week for another episode of Spirit Fuel. Have a blessed day. Thank you. God bless.